Good evening. Well, welcome here. It's good to have you all here this evening. We're glad that you came. It's a very big crowd, and we're thankful for each one of you that made the effort to come listen tonight. We have several choirs planning to sing this evening. I'm not exactly sure how many people, maybe with the children. Um, it's close to 200 people, not all in one. So quite a few other people here. The last few days, we've been uh, hearing a lot about singing, teaching on music, and that it being a big part of that is worship to God. And often when we think of singing, or usually, it's us singing to God. And I think that is correct and right. But a couple days ago, I was reading in the book of Zephaniah in the Old Testament. And towards the end of the book, there was a verse that stood out to me. And it says, Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. And then the last part here is what stood out to me. He will joy over thee with singing. And that phrase stood out to me, especially in light of music camp this week. The thought of God singing. God singing over us. And I thought of the picture of like a father holding a child with joy and singing and what that must be like. It's a beautiful thought. But <clears throat> we have beautiful singers here tonight, but I'm sure it pales in comparison to what someday hopefully we'll, we will all hear God himself singing over us. Just a little bit on the order of the service. I'll, I'll go over the, I'm not going to go over the whole program. I think most of you have access to a program, but I'll, I'll go over it briefly here. So there's four different choirs here. There'll be the first one by Lloyd Kaufman, and then the second one by Cameron Stryker. And then after that, there'll be a congregational song and then a little talk by Lloyd Kaufman about Music Camp's vision. And then after that, there's a children's choir, and then at the end, the mass choir. And closing comments. I would, I would mention here at the bottom of that program, they have a few reminders to just try to be as quiet as possible. Um, obviously, there's children and babies, and that's great. Those are good natural sounds in an audience like this, but if you could turn your phones off and uh, refrain from applauses between songs and things like that, that would be appreciated. So I think that's mostly it for the introduction. If you are able to and care to, why don't you all stand for prayer, an opening prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come to you this evening. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your blessing, your many blessings to us. We pray for your presence here tonight. Be with all of the singers, all of the people listening. Pray that you would bless and speak to each one of us. It could be a time where we are encouraged and our minds are drawn to you and your desire to have a relationship with each one of us. So we ask for your presence and your spirit's presence here tonight with us all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We will start with one congregational song by, led by Cameron Stryker. Join me with song number 64, song number 64. <laughs>
First, just a word of thanks to the community here, the congregation here, and all who have helped to make this possible. It's been a really delightful week for me in many ways. It's a lot of work, of course, but it's been enjoyable. Part of that has been seeing some uh, 
former choir members from a year or two or longer ago, most of them longer ago, and just to reconnect after many years, to be able to work with people who love, uh, who love singing and are willing to work hard at it, for people who enjoy choral singing and go to the disciplines of doing that, and for people who enjoy congregational singing and bring energy and meaning to that. There's been a lot of singing, there's been other things as well, but it's been a good, uh, a very good week in many ways. One of the things that I did learn is that if you have serious interest in losing calories, uh, it's not a very good idea to come. The meals were excellent, they were enjoyable. I heard one person say that it's not common to put on weight in a place, in a situation like this, but I think it was a he who said he did. Um, in any case, just a few comments about the music camp and its mission, its vision. It began about, I didn't check exactly, and I should have, it was 15-ish years ago. In fact, I think, that, I think that we were going into the 15th year when uh, COVID hit and has uh, changed this piece of history in numbers of ways, and so there have not been music camps at their permanent locations for the last two years. So it may be up to 17 years or so, but at least it began in Virginia and was a kind of experiment that proved to be useful and has continued in a variety of ways. Uh, Shenandoah Christian Music Camp is sponsored or is supported by people from a number of different Mennonite bodies, uh, Anabaptist bodies across the country. Uh, a few years ago, I remember in one year, it would have been around 20 different fellowships or conferences or groups that were represented and perhaps more in some years. There's a year-round staff uh, working out of Virginia as well as instructors who are uh, live in different places across the U.S. and Canada and who participate in a variety of ways. One, uh, one way to describe the vision of the music camp is disciples, disciples whose music making reflects Jesus. One can be a disciple without being particularly musical. One can be musical without being a disciple. And we are wanting to approach this in ways that focus seriously on being disciples, seriously on taking music seriously and being able to put the two together in a significant kind of language. The one mission statement that has been drafted, I'm not sure if this is an official one, but it is a descriptive one, is that the music camp exists to provide biblical training and resources in music and worship for the everyday Anabaptist. And in this case, and it is not limited to Anabaptists, by the way, but that is where the, the primary focus has been. And one of the key words in that phrase is every day. And it's significant because sometimes we think of, we, we can think of musicians as being people who know how to sing and they're, they're the ones who sing and the rest of us don't necessarily have to and don't like, may not like to. But we are, we are very serious about wanting music to be used and usable by everyone at whatever level of experience or interest they have. And for some, that will involve more significant discipline. For others, it will involve singing with purpose and intentionality in their congregations. All of those are important. And I recall that at the beginning of the, 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 the music camp in the first uh, orientation session, there were comments that one predominant purpose for it was to strengthen congregational singing. And it's out of congregational singing that much, much of the rest of the music in the life of the church comes. A few different formats in which we operate. One is the permanent music camps. The first one began in Virginia. The second one began a few years later in northeastern Ohio. And the third one, a couple of years after that, in southern Ontario. 
And these three did not meet the last two years again because of COVID parameters, but are on schedule to meet again this year. I'd only suggest that if any of you are interested in attending any of the music camps, particularly Virginia, that you pay, play co you pay close attention to New Year's Day. I think the online registration happens then, and the last couple of years it was filled within the first day. And so if you are interested, take a look at maybe 15 minutes after midnight. Uh, but uh, there would be openings in all of them. Ohio may well fill, but it would tend to be a little bit later. In any case, I would encourage you to think about considering coming. The second level that was started probably four, four to five years ago is referred to as mobile camps. These are camps like this one where a community is interested and they are able to put together the, the support and the operational base for it and we send instructors and use the curriculum uh, pieces of it that are used at the main music camps. Some of these are a week long, some are about a half week as this one was, and just uh, this year a mini camp is beginning. The first one was about two weeks ago in Chamber Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. A Friday evening, an all day Saturday, and whatever spills over into the Sunday in the regular church program. Right now, there are, I believe, eight, uh, eight either mobile or mini camps that are scheduled through fiscal, the next fiscal year, which began the 1st of October and ends the end of September of next year. And this one at Halsey is the second one of this sequence of eight. The, the functions of a music camp go in a variety of directions. One is to create resources for churches and schools and families just to help their understanding of music and worship. One, and these were, in op, these were in process before COVID, but I'm glad that's happening now instead of in a song. We were fighting that the last couple of days. Uh, one, one of the things that COVID has done is to open up a little bit more space for some of these other resourcing things to take place. A book called Sing for Joy, I'm sorry, the Sing for Joy is an elementary music curriculum that has begun that is intended to be extended through uh, for K through 12. Draw Near is another curriculum that was uh, developed for the music camp programs um, starting about two years ago and we're using that here. It's equivalent to the first and second levels of the rudiments and sight singing that are used in the music camps. There are a number of training videos uh, dealing with the basics of music and song leading, some articles that are online for building a healthy church, singing culture, and so on. Music is available, a number of CDs from the closing programs, choir CDs over the last number of years. Into His Presence, is a songbook for churches and schools and family worship that was released within the last year. And also a children's songbook called Follow Me that is based on songs, some new settings and some older ones, especially based on words and teachings of Jesus. This is done as a, th this whole program is done as a service to Anabaptist communities. Uh, prayer support is essential, financial support is essential. And most of the support does come from contributions from individuals, from churches, some monthly, some uh, uh, one-time contributions, uh, some from businesses and churches and so on. If you're interested, on a table in the back, just to the left of the mailboxes, there are a few brochures about the music camp. Be free to pick any of those up. If you have interest in support, uh, we would welcome that as well. Uh, our goal is to help to teach and, and provide resources for communities and congregations like this, and in turn, encourage people from those settings to continue to work in their own communities, and in this way, to continue to expand the worship and the music life of the church. Blessing to you as you do your part in whatever that involves. God bless you.
this time, we're now going to have an offering for the expenses of the camp here. Um, so we'll ask the ushers to uh, come, come forward for that offering. Um, while we're doing that, please open your church hymnal to number 467. Number 467, Open the Wells of Salvation. <clears throat> no soul, Lord, I am fond thee, earnestly longing into thy holy likeness to grow, thirsting for more and deeper communion, yearning thy love more fully to know. Open the wells of grace and salvation for the restraint. and refine my heart and affection. Seal me and make
Son of David, have mercy. Align my
I will speak up. The first song that we're singing is In Thee Is Gladness. The composer is a man by the name of Gastoldi, which obviously is not German. It is Italian, but the text of this song that is the most familiar is a German text. In dir is Freude, in you is joy. We're going to sing the first verse in German, and without doing the complete translation, it simply opens, in dir is Freude, in allen Leide, in you, Lord, is joy in all our sorrows. Wer dir vertraut, hat wohl gebaut, who has trusted, who trusted you, has built well. And down toward the end of that verse, an dir wir kleben, in Tod und Leben. We cling to you in death 
and in life. Nichts kann uns scheiden. Nothing can separate us. Hallelujah. In thee is gladness.
This song is a kind of doxology. A doxology is thought of sometimes as an expression of praise to God. It's also a, often a kind of blessing. And so this word of blessing has a part of the song for this evening and also for those, those of you who have been here as a part of this time and are going to quite a few places that you call home. Grace be to you. You are God's people, members of his household. Grace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Blessed peace of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Peace be unto you.
you have sung a bit this evening. It seems like we should close by singing together. If you must use a hymnal, number 536 is Lift Your Glad Voices. If you can, sing by memory. It's a powerful song of the resurrection of life. Jesus is risen. Man shall not die now forever. Lift your glad voices. Would you stand together, please? <laughs> now? Okay. A few announcements at the end. First of all, thank you all very much for coming. Really appreciate it. I want to thank everyone that uh, signed up to come this week. It would be really difficult to do this without participants. To the instructors, Lloyd and um, Cameron and Gwendolyn for coming from mainly, well, from the East Coast, I guess, Ohio, Virginia, Ontario. Um, the local committee that put everything together and made it happen, the cooks, just a lot, lot of people put a lot of effort into this. Thank you all very much. Everyone is welcome to eat supper here with us on the other side of the wall. There are more people here than we anticipated. <laughs> so you are all welcome to eat with us as long as the food lasts. A couple of things about that. There are not enough tables and chairs set up for everyone. So if when we go out, if we could, you know, make sure the ones that need chairs are getting chairs, but we will go out that side and file through the cafeteria, go clear to the far end, and don't sit every other. Um, and when you are done, please get up and make room for the next people. Also, small children sometimes run through first and pile their plates full. Um, I hear there may be people monitoring that, but parents, 
maybe if you could just keep track of any children that aren't old enough to really portion control, uh, then maybe take, take them through with you or work something out there. Again, thank you everyone for coming. Maybe you could all stand and we will pray. Did I miss any announcements there in the back? Anybody? Okay. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you tonight and we thank you. We thank you for voices to sing. We thank you that you are worthy of our praise and honor. Pray that you would bless each one that's here tonight. Thank you for the food we're about to enjoy. Bless the ones that prepared it. Keep us all safe as we go from here with our families and friends wherever they are tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.